Resuming debate, the reprise de débat, the Honourable uh, Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister. Madame la Présidente, merci beaucoup. C'est un honneur d'être ici dans cette chambre historique pour donner mon premier discours en tant que député fédéral de Vaudreuil-Soulange. Madame la Présidente, je veux commencer par remercier tous les citoyens de Vaudreuil-Soulange pour leur appui et pour me donner la chance de les représenter ici au Parlement pour ce mandat. Je veux aussi remercier mon épouse Paula, qui a toujours été là pour moi durant cette longue campagne, mon fils Anderson, qui chaque jour me donne l'énergie nécessaire pour continuer, ma mère, Louisa, Jean-Paul et Alan, mon frère Alexandre et tous les membres de ma famille qui m'ont aidé à devenir la voix de ma communauté ici à Ottawa. Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank the great people of Audrey Soulange for giving me the honor to address this house today and to represent them and be their voice, their voice here in this historic chamber during the 42nd Parliament. En somme, Madame la Présidente, le discours du trône a été très bien reçu par mes concitoyens. J'ai d'ailleurs eu la chance d'en discuter avec plusieurs d'entre eux depuis qu'elle a été élue par Son Excellence le Gouverneur Général. J'ai reçu de nombreux commentaires positifs et des encouragements pour ce gouvernement. J'ajouterai, Madame la Présidente, que le plan de ce gouvernement représente bien les valeurs de mes concitoyens et celles des Canadiens, tout particulièrement l'égalité et opportunité. Cela, Madame la Présidente, a contribué à faire du Canada l'un des pays les plus prospères au monde, une terre choisie chaque année par des centaines de milliers de personnes à la recherche d'une vie meilleure. J'ai confiance que le plan de ce gouvernement, tel qu'exprimé au, au moment du discours du trône, fera en sorte que les gens de Vaudreuil-Soulange et ceux de partout au pays pourront atteindre leur potentiel. Dans les dix dernières années, la croissance démographique de Vaudreuil-Soulange a par ailleurs été l'une des plus élevées au pays. Des dizaines de milliers de personnes ont choisi de faire leur vie dans notre région. Plusieurs d'entre eux ont venu à cause de la richesse de notre patrimoine naturel. Je parle, Madame la Présidente, des vues panoramiques de Montrigo et des vergers dîle perrault Je parle des rives d'Hudson, de Vaudreuil-sur-le-Lac et les cèdres, ainsi que les terres agricoles qui parsèment notre région. C'est pour cela, Madame la Présidente, que je me joins aux citoyens de Vaudreuil-Soulange dans le but de bâtir une économie plus forte, toujours dans le respect de notre environnement. Mes citoyens, les concitoyens de Vaudreuil-Soulange, attendent avec impatience la mise en place d'un système d'évaluation environnementale plus rigoureux, lequel donnerait à leurs représentants municipaux ainsi qu'aux communautés autochtones, une voix dans les processus de développement des projets. De plus, Madame la Présidente, mes concitoyens applaudissent la promesse du gouvernement d'investir des sommes historiques dans les technologies et les infrastructures durables et écologiques, ainsi que dans la capacité du Canada à atténuer les changements climatiques. Tout cela contribuera à la croissance de notre économie, tout en assurant la protection et la préservation de notre environnement. En effet, Madame la Présidente, ce gouvernement reconnaît que nos richesses naturelles sont avant tout l'héritage des générations futures et que nous devons faire tout ce qui est possible enfin de les protéger. Madame Speaker, our community has had the privilege of welcoming so many new families over the last decade, predominantly young families like my own with young children. These families have come from the island of Montreal, from all across the province of Quebec and Ontario, and from all around the world. They are proud to add to the richness of culture and history that blankets our region. Our community is proud to celebrate this diversity through annual cultural festivities in the cities of Pancor and Vaudreuil, and the citizens of my riding applaud this government statement in the speech from the throne, and I quote, we are, as Canadians, stronger because of our differences not in spite of them. Madam Speaker, I also want to state that the families that make up my riding are incredibly hardworking families. They're owners of small businesses, they're farmers, they're healthcare workers, they're teachers, aerospace workers, pilots, public servants, and of course, Madam Speaker, the hardest job of all, their parents and their grandparents. Like most Canadians, they're working longer hours, yet still find it hard to make ends meet and provide for their children and grandchildren. And that is why, Madam Speaker, they welcome this government's pledge to increase support for lower-income seniors and reduce taxes for middle-class families, both of which will put more money in the pockets of those that need it 
and less in the pockets of those that don't. They also welcome this government's plan to introduce a more progressive Canada Child Benefit, a plan that, according to the Parliamentary Budget Officer, will lift over 300,000 children out of poverty, many of whom, Madam Speaker, live in my community. Au Canada, aujourd'hui, plus de 1 million d'enfants, presque 1 sur 5, vivent dans la pauvreté. 1 sur 5. Madame la Présidente, je suis fier que ce gouvernement ait décidé de s'attaquer à cette inacceptable réalité. Ce faisant, nous suivons la voie tracée par d'autres Canadiens qui, avant nous, ont eu le courage et la confiance d'investir dans le futur de notre pays, les prochaines générations. Je crois que mes honorables collègues sont d'accord. C'est la meilleure façon de nous préparer aux défis futurs. Voilà pourquoi, Madame la Présidente, ce gouvernement mettra de l'avant un ambitieux plan afin de répondre aux enjeux touchant la jeunesse canadienne. À titre de secrétaire parlementaire à la jeunesse auprès du Premier ministre, ces questions sont bien sûr d'une grande importance pour moi. De plus, ces questions me touchent particulièrement parce que j'étais élevé par une mère monoparentale et parce que je suis aujourd'hui, Madame, Madame la Présidente, de le père d'un petit garçon de 14 mois et que je souhaite transmettre un, un héritage dont il serait fier. With this in mind, I look forward to working with the Prime Minister to increasing the voice that our youth have in the walls of Parliament by creating the first ever, first ever Youth Advisory Council to the Prime Minister. I look forward to ensuring that we increase opportunities that we offer youth to serve their country both locally and abroad. I look forward to implementing our plan to reduce the economic burden of all Canadian youth who pursue post-secondary education. And, Madam Speaker, I look forward to providing economic opportunity by reducing the economic burden of unemployed youth on their families by increasing the capacity of the government's summer job program over the next three years. L'idée, Madame la Présidente, est que si l'on met tous nos efforts en fin de canaliser l'énergie, l'innovation, et la créativité collective des jeunes Canadiens, notre pays s'en portera mieux. Ce principe a toujours été l'un des moteurs du succès de notre nation et il nous aidera à réaliser notre plein potentiel. Madam Speaker, I take this opportunity to note that at one point in our history, we stood up and recognized that if we wanted our country to thrive, we needed to provide every single woman with the same rights and privileges of men. At one point in our history, we rose up to make the case for universal primary and secondary education to ensure that we empower the next generation with the tools necessary to meet the challenges of their time. And yes, Madam Speaker, at one point in our history, we recognized that providing equal universal health care for all Canadians was necessary to ensure that we met the basic needs of our population. This ensured that the thoughts of Canadians were focused not on how they would pay for their health care costs, or the healthcare costs of their family members, but instead on growing strong families, building more prosperous businesses, creating or assisting community groups, and serving our country in other ways. These are just some of the ideas and plans that have been put in place over our 149-year history and that have helped Canadians build a Canada that every single one of us in this House can be proud of. Madame la Présidente, lorsque nous investissons dans les Canadiens, la table est mise pour un pays plus fort et plus prospère pour nous et pour les générations futures. Ce sont, ce sont pour ces raisons et pour bien d'autres que je suis fier de la voie choisie par notre gouvernement depuis le 19 octobre et au nom de tous les citoyens de vaudreuil soulanges Madame la Présidente, je vous remercie. Questions et commentaires? Questions and comments? The Honourable Member from Barry Springwater, Oro Madonte. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's a long name, I know. Uh, I've said it many times over the past few months. Uh, Madam Speaker, and I first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, my uh, Honourable Colleague for his speech today. Uh, but I believe there are some concerns that have been raised uh, and need to continue to be raised. I think actions uh, speak louder than words, obviously. We've only been here for about four months. But in those four months, the actions we've seen are a tax break that benefits those who earn $190,000 while 
does not benefit those at all who earn less than $45,000. And if governments were judged, as you said, you've heard from your uh, residents and constituents that uh, they like the throne speech. If governments were judged on words alone, then they would continue to get reelected over and over again. Why did this government put a priority on helping those earning over $190,000 a year over those earning less than $45,000 a year? L'honorable secrétaire parlementaire du Premier ministre. I thank my colleague uh, from across the aisle for his question today, and I thank him for, uh, for his accolades. I just wanted to respond to his question by saying that we have put in place many measures that will help lower-income families, many of which would have helped my mother when she was raising my brother and I on her own, particularly <coughs> a significant increase to the Child Canada benefit, which will lift over 300,000 children in this country out of poverty. We're also putting in place measures to increase the amount of funding that we provide to lower income seniors. The list is very lengthy, Madam Speaker, and I'm very proud of the measures that this government has put in place to help those most vulnerable, struggling families in this country. And I look forward to working with this government to making sure that those measures are put in place. Questions and commentaires, questions and comments. The Honourable Member from Essex. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, congratulations to the member across on his excellent speech. I'm pleased to hear him mention seniors in health care in his speech today because some of that was missing from the throne speech. We're deeply concerned that there is no commitment to cancel the Conservatives' planned cuts to health care. Reversing these dangerous cuts is critical to strengthening our health care in Canada. Will the government commit to a strategy to provide the care that seniors need at home, in hospitals, in long-term care facilities, and through palliative care? Will the government cancel the Conservatives' planned cuts to health care in Canada? Madam Speaker, I welcome the question from my colleague once again across the aisle. Um, I have to say that health care is an issue that is a personal concern to me. I've been diagnosed with cancer twice in my life, and I understand all too well the wait times that some of us face in various provinces across the country. One of the things that I'm very proud of is the fact that our Prime Minister has stated clearly and categorically that we are going to once again play a proactive role in working with the provinces to ensure that we are offering the best possible support to the provincial systems in offering quality health care to all Canadians. And I look forward to seeing what this government is going to do over our mandate to make sure that that happens. Thank you. Questions and commentaires, questions and comments. The honourable member from, is it Guelph? Thank you, Madam Speaker, and good, good one. And uh, thank you to the honourable member that uh, made such a great presentation on youth. So exciting to see the government focusing on youth and youth, uh, uh, having a youth an advisory council for youth. I'm wondering, Madam Speaker, whether the the member has any plans to address youth unemployment and youth mental health, working with the provinces to try and correct the situation with the youth on unemployment and mental health. L'honorable secrétaire parlementaire du Premier ministre. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and thank you very much for that question. I have to say that one of the things I'm most proud of in working with the Prime Minister is that he has put the utmost importance on the quality of health care, the quality of opportunity for our youth across the country. And he has basically given me a mandate to work with him in whatever capacity that I can to make sure that we're providing quality health care, quality care in terms of uh, mental care and, and ensuring that we provide opportunities for youth uh, to find jobs. One of the things that we're starting off with is to ensure that uh, we're doubling the number of jobs that are available for youth uh, throughout the summer that are sponsored by the Government of Canada. And that's something that will help uh, lift the burden off of families who are unfortunately having to take care of youth who can't find jobs. Uh, it's going to help those families. It's also going to help those youth uh, attend university and find the jobs that this country needs to get us out of this economic crisis. Thank you. Resuming debate, 